Hey, welcome to Watchman Waiting on the Lord. It's August 15th, 2023. Uh, today's topic is about how to, um, I don't forget how I made the title exactly, how to test for false prophets. And uh, so this is, an, this is an important video, something you should know, something every, every Christian, every beginner Christian who's just starting to read the Bible, you, this is a good thing to know before, before you begin. But before I get to this, I just wanted to say I'm watching a video right now I'm going to leave the link in the description box. I recommend you read it. And I'm not jumping to conclusions on this. I'm just, you know, as, you know, as I see everything around us happening and uh, my personal, my own personal belief is that we're in end times. And uh, I believe I know how to discern the times by, <clears throat> by all the warnings and, and all the very, you know, the specifics of the way that people are going to be at the end. So I'm watching this video. I don't think it's any coincidence. Um, what's I going to say? It's uh, by Truth Unedited. So this guy makes good videos. And uh, it has to do with what is CERN. CERN, that you know, that the, the biggest scientific research project in the world is like 7,000 scientists. What are they doing down there? And I'm not going to get into into those specifics because it would be too too difficult. Uh, it's the the uh, Large Hadron Collider. There's something to this place, okay? Number one, I, I'm going to ask you to look at two symbols, okay? The symbols for the World Economic Forum forms in that there is a 666. Take a deeper look. If you can't find it, look on Im Google Images. Look up uh, um, uh, WF666 symbol and it will, it'll, you'll find one. that will show you where it is. The one for CERN, their symbol, is outwardly uh, overt. You can see it. It's a 666. So these things aren't coincidences. And um, so anyways, there's scientists all over the world. Uh, it doesn't matter what political divides there are. And um, what gets me is that there are statues. There's a statue outside of it. And uh, the statue outside of CERN is Vishnu, the destroyer of, wor of worlds, OK? And the stuff they're doing down there smashing particles just under the speed of light and stuff. I don't know. I don't know how to speak to the scientific part of it, but what they're doing, they're they're trying to bring something about. They're trying to find out where mass started and and uh, yeah, so in Revelations it says, you know, uh, the angel is given the key to the bottomless pit and uh, you know, it opens up you know the furnace, the and all the all the locusts, the demon locusts come out, and you have to look at that place. And it said, it says in Revelations, and uh, and you know the the uh, angel that comes out of there is is called Abaddon, and in the Greek is called um, Ap like Apollo. I forget which one it is backwards, but uh, Apollyon is the destroyer, and right outside. Uh, above ground is is the statue of Vishnu and you got to look at these things but not only that so I'm just finding out this right now this part of it that I'm finding out right now that where they chose to build this is right on top of where the temple of Apollo was the original temple of Apollo was think about that and think of the think of the the relevance of that two revelations i think it's revelations nine pretty crazy I'll, I'll leave that link in the description box so i don't want to jump to conclusions but seeing as how you know i believe we're in end times it's hard not to to see that kind of stuff and so so how to test for false prophets this is one of the toughest things a christian can face in their journey of finding truth Every Christian has seen, I got to check it to see if this didn't, uh, 
my connection breaks sometimes. Every Christian has seen or heard, uh, heard a false prophet. Every practicing Christian anyways. You can find them all over the place and more easily on YouTube. It wasn't until about six months ago that I learned there was a detailed way to do this. I, I read this, but I, you know, I didn't keep it in mind. In Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 22. Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 22. Um, and I will read that in a second. When you comb through videos, it's difficult, if not impossible, to miss how many testimonies there are from individual people who claim to have been to hell or heaven and being in uh, Jesus' uh, uh, presence. This poses a problem because, of course, uh, as a believer, me as a believer, I want to believe that their stories are true. Who am I or who are we to question what is true and what isn't, right? Like, we don't know what happened. I have my own story, and uh, I don't tell it often, and I, do, I don't do it for a reason because I don't... <sighs> You know how Paul, he, Paul in the Bible, he didn't, he didn't go in and say that to everyone. Like, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a good testimony, right? But he didn't try to exalt himself that way. Pardon me one sec here. He humbled himself by... staying away from trying to exalt himself. So this poses a problem because I have to eat because of my stomach. When I talk, my stomach's real bad. This poses a problem because, of course, me as a believer wants to believe their story is true. Who are we to question what might be? With individual testimonies, it's hard to tell, and it's, it's possible that some are true. There are false prophets out there literally saying, thus says the Lord, and clearly um, they have no idea what will recompense on their head. Paul says, and this is true, you shall know them by their fruits. If you're a new Christian struggling with sin, I'm not pertaining to you. It's the ones who appear to know scripture, and that's exactly what these false prophets um, bank on. They bank on uh, Christians who haven't read the Bible. It's all too easy to fool those who aren't reading their Bibles. Do a test right now if you don't believe me, if you know scripture. Go find a false teacher on YouTube and go scroll through their comment section. All you see is prayers and praise. Those poor people their souls, their salvation, and their eternities are being fooled. I'm not saying they're damned for, for believing it, but it, it's where it leads you, right? It, that will lead you to a place where you don't want to be. What do the rest of these people's lives look like? Are these uh, possible false teachers helping and ministering to others? What does their life look like? That's the answer. Okay, so this is Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 22. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that um, shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? How do I know the word that he hasn't spoken? So this is verse 22. When a prophet speak, speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follows, so okay, so I like reading uh, uh, the New King James Version verses this to take all these 
you know, speaketh and uh, that type of thing out of it. I just, I changed. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if what he says follows, uh, it's, nor comes to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Yeah, I don't, there's another part to that, I apologize. Um, I should have got the other one, but what he's saying is if if what the person who who is um, saying it, if it comes to pass, then it's true. But if someone's, if, 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 uh, if a so-called prophet says something, say it comes true, and uh, you, you got to keep watching, right? And if they say something else and it's false, people can get things right. So, so it doesn't come to pass. I forget, um, I forget now, but I heard in uh, the scripture in the Old Testament yesterday, so it was like two days ago, if a false prophet in old Jerusalem enters the gate and spreads false doctrines, they are to immediately kill him or her. Sounds harsh, eh? But it isn't. Does that sound harsh to you? I don't believe it is. It's God's um, goal and will to have truth and purity. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. It takes just one person, one man or woman, to turn an entire nation. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. So does that sound harsh now? That they, you know, what let's just say a year or two from the point that they start spreading false doctrines, they turn the whole nation. I think that is worth their life. And, and God asked them to do that, to take their lives because of that. Um, people creeping in unawares. Paul states in the New Testament, uh, that he, Paul states in the New Testament, people that creep in unawares. I heard someone say, and they're right, there is no regulation in Christianity Look, I think Christianity should be free, but I do think there should be regulation, which it isn't, um, that there's just so many denominations. I think there should be, to some degree, an establishment. I have to say, um, you know, I'm talking about, like, crazy evangelical uh, or prosperity, you know. I'm talking about, like, Kenneth Copeland, where people are being defrauded. When you hear of lies about God ethnically cleansing nations, people who are unlearned in the Bible, who just know little parts, or even people who, who have read and, and became atheists, you need to know the reasoning behind why God took their lives, took nations' lives. It was their wickedness that God destroyed them. Do you know God wouldn't let the Israelites or Jews into the Promised Land until the the time of the Amorites, I think it was the Amorites, uh, until their time was up. What does that mean? It means that their wickedness had to reach a certain level because God was still, God is long-suffering, right? Uh, it's no different than the Book of Kings. God gave a certain amount of time to do for people to turn away from their wickedness. So, so he's long-suffering. So, uh, pardon me a second. I'm going to. Uh, that's it for that. I'm I'm jumping onto something else I thought of the other day. Pardon me. Very tough for me to swallow water. I don't like doing it on video. A thought entered my mind today, so that was yesterday, and it was like a eureka moment. In my personal belief, I believe the mark of the beast won't be a literal mark, no matter what I see under the skin type things. I just, I don't believe that's gonna be the mark of the beast. 
I believe it's going to be a forced worship, like Sunday worship. They're going to make us worship something, and if we worship it, you know, like with um, uh, Meshach, Abednego, you know, and, and um, Babylon type thing. Um, but the beast system itself, there is a beast system, right? We see everything changing. Um, especially like that, you know, under the skin, and they're talking about IDs. I think that's, you know, all part of this the B system. We see everything changing, especially the Christians, because we're looking out for any changes. Um, we're just naturally looking for any changes societally and globally. You see those iris scans um, from that orb thing. And world coin, so that leads to world, they're doing it for world coin UBI, universal basic income. It appears that soon enough, due to artificial intelligence, and you see all these natural disasters nonstop all over the world, so many people will be jobless due to loss of jobs. Uh, the AI taking over, it's the, the AI taking over, that's what will cause that. And, uh, we will somehow be forced into that system. Despite believing uh, forced Sunday worship, that's what I think is going to happen. I think the Pope's going to come in and, and uh, I think he's behind the scenes doing something. That's just my opinion. I'm still very cautious of all the things that are being implemented, all these new things, because there's a lot of confusion out there. Because as a Christian, I don't want to make a mistake that costs my, my eternity. The thought that came to my mind was this. What if it didn't happen slowly, like over months or years? You know, like people see, like you can see the, the, the beast system slowly coming about, right? And, uh, you know, they're talking about CBDC and people think it's going to happen over a period of maybe a year uh, type thing. What if it happened overnight concerning CBDC? Let me explain. We all have our money safely in the bank, and you know, so many people think that they're they're untouchable. The WF could force us quickly. I mean, the elites, if they wanted, which I'm suspecting they might do. How, how would they do that? What if they free? Um, <sighs> difficult speaking right now. What if they prefabricated? like a, a grid failure. This is just my thoughts, okay? A, what if they prefabricated a grid failure or a complete cyber attack of all infrastructure or just like, you know, just computers? And I believe they probably do a lot of small tests on us. The nations would be thrown into panic mode immediately. You know, maybe there'd be a broadcast over the radio or something, who knows what they could have planned. Um, the, the attack would be long-lasting. That our only survival would be to entering into a WF money system like that world coin plan until they got us back online. And when they get us back online, um, as a safety concern, they keep us on that and we have no choice. Think of how quickly something like that could happen. That's what came to my mind. This is only but one example of the ideas that people like, you know, the the Rockefellers and the, you know, the big families, BlackRock, um, who do to control us for good. Remember, like in the days of Noah, God will God will only take so much evil evil right there we're living in an evil time. And it's continual. It's just like it said. And we're also living in, in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Lot. You can see that. It's hard not to see that. I don't think it's as bad sexually as as that because it was out in the open like, like you couldn't imagine, I'm sure, in those days. But it's resembling that. Um, I think God will only take so much of this. And, uh, and it must be eradicated like... Like Noah, like with the flood, except this time it's going to be with fire. Um, just like the Book of Kings, God faces no other choice, or He does. He's just there will be no other, because 
the reason God and kings had to do all the things he did was because it got to a point where there everyone was worshiping Baal in the high places and the only way to turn them around was to to set countries against them like Babylon like Assyria like Syria and Egypt because it's rotten at the core and right now I don't think it's ever been more rotten in, in all of human history I just wanted to close by saying I just noticed this, well, not just noticed this, but it's becoming so much more apparent. The people, you know, you, you know, that I grew up with, you know, um, that I liked in movies and stuff, and they played heroes and, and stuff like that, I'm finding out that a lot of these people are just the opposite in, in Hollywood. And uh, I don't mean all of them. There are certainly some good people. So anyways, um, thanks for watching today's video. God bless.